Hey guys, Jigsarp here, and I'm bringing you back your weekly episode of Forza Motorsport 4. Today we're going to be doing what I like to call a limited competition build. So as you guys know, this is a 2008 Mitsubishi Evo 10 GSR with 305 horsepower. Now, as many of you might have noticed in the real world, this is a very desirable Japanese sports car. All-wheel drive, 2-liter turbo, everything you want, and it's decently affordable for what it is. And by the way, I'm going to be talking Forza money, not US dollars here or anything else, just so we're clear. It's $29,000 in the game, so let's just pretend like that's what it is in real life. I'll be referring to it as dollars. So $29,000, that can be pretty hefty, especially if you're someone like me, you know, you're a college student, you only work part-time in a pretty crappy job. Then you've got this, the 1984 Mark I Golf GTI, one of the original hot hatches. And uh, it's not the most impressive thing in the world, you know, 90 horsepower, weighs as much as a feather does. It's basically nothing compared to this new Evo, the latest model Evo. But say we took that $29,000 as our limit and tried to make this thing just as fast as that Evo, or preferably faster, for less money. So the cheapest car you can buy in this game is $5,000, and this is one of those cars that costs $5,000. So that means we have $24,000 to play with. Technically, we have $23,999 to play with because we don't want to spend as much on an Evo. Um, we don't have we don't want to spend as much as an Evo costs on this car. We want to make this car faster for less. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thing for a hot lap as well as the Evo, compare the times, see how fast they both are, see how much we have to improve to become faster than the Evo, and then upgrade slowly and do several hot laps in between to see if we can make it for a lot less than $29,000. So here we go. Let's start off with the Mitsubishi Hotline.
So as you guys just saw, the Evo absolutely dominated the golf. The Mitsubishi Evo's time was well, 1 minute and 58 seconds. Now by the way, I'm not going to be going into milliseconds all that much. It was a 158.0. I'm not going to go for more than a tenth of a second. You know, the hundredths and thousands of a second, I don't think that's all that necessary at this point. The Golf stock ran a 2 minute 5.7 seconds. So we were 7.7 .7 seconds slower than the Evo. Now, there's a lot of things that attribute to that, like the lack of horsepower and torque. We are quite a bit lighter, 1,200 pounds lighter, and our balance isn't as good as the Evo either. The engines are actually almost the same size, but obviously that hasn't been enough. So now we're going to be keeping track of exactly how much we spent on this thing. So we spent 5,000 thus far, and not on this thing, sorry, I selected the wrong vehicle. We're going to start upgrading this thing. Now, it might seem like a lot. Uh, $24,000 might seem like quite a lot you can spend on a car, and it is, but in this game, you can add it up really quickly. I mean, as you can see, each engine swap is about $7,000, drivetrain swap, drive swap $7,000, turbo $3,000, and then boom, you're there. It's just crazy fast. So we're going to be doing very specific upgrades. I haven't done this ahead of time, by the way, so this is going to be a challenge for me. I don't know if it's going to be possible to be faster than the Evo. For this amount of money but I'm gonna do what I can so aerodynamics is definitely not gonna be the first thing we go into I'm just kind of exploring my options but I think definitely at this point the golf has a lot of body roll and it has a lack of traction a lot of the time so I think tires are definitely an important thing now the question is do we get race tires that have that you know or cost ten thousand dollars see it's so you can see kind of why I'm hesitant to do a lot of stuff but I can widen the tire for pretty cheap. You know, we'll still have stock compound, but we'll have much wider tires. So that's something I'm definitely considering at this point. Wheels would be beyond useful. I think I'm definitely going to go with wheels. They'll lighten us up quite a bit. They'll help us out with our lateral Gs, etc. Now, just comes the decision of picking a set of wheels. This is something I always have problems with. I just love too many different styles. I actually kind of want to go with this. We'll see. We'll see here in a second. Maybe a five spoke would look nice. Actually, I think I want to go with these. These Graham Light T57 RCs, <clears throat> which are $3,600. So let me just add that in. Dropping us down considerably. So let's actually go back. So there we go. We lost 25 pounds and all, our lateral Gs didn't change all that much, but the lost weight will definitely help out. Now, in terms of size on the wheel, you have to compare lateral Gs to weight. So I mean, increasing uh, the front size will add a pound and a half on each side, but it doesn't change our lateral Gs all that much, and let's see the story for the rear. About the same. So it won't add that much weight. But then, of course, it will look a lot better with 15s. I think 15s are probably the ideal size on these as compared to 14. But I think at this point, we'll leave the size alone. Just, you know, we'll see if we have any money to play with when we're done. But that's what we're doing for now. Now, brakes aren't that much of a concern. But what is, is definitely handling. Like I said, a lot of body roll goes on. And uh, now we have to consider ride height. So, I mean, we could spend 2700 and go with you know the medium route or we can spend you know more than twice that and get a little bit lighter and better lateral G's but either way as you can see our lateral G's don't change that much but this will help out in the long run obviously they'll help more the more power we get etc so I think I'm actually gonna go with uh, the sport ones alright and following along with the whole handling craze we're gonna get some anti-roll bars which take off quite a bit of weight Looks like these will actually worsen our lateral G's at this point. So I think I might have to come back to those. Let's check out roll cages. That's going to stiffen us up a lot, but the thing is it's going to add a lot of weight. And basically, you know, our light weight is basically what's affiliated with our success thus far. Let's see, it'll also change up our... Uh, our weight weight distribution. We're at 63% stock, 
This will get us all the way up to 61%, which is actually very important. That weight re redistribution is going to help us out a lot. Not to mention lateral Gs go up like crazy. I think it's definitely worth doing. Let's do it. So that brings us up to 13500 $13,500 thus far. Alright guys, after reviewing my math, I found I made a little bit of a mistake. We have so far spent $13,800, leaving us with $15,199. So there we go, we got our height, we've got some stability, and what do you say we get some of our weight reduction back? Now this is probably going to be one of the most important things. As you can see, 233 pounds off is wonderful, but our front weight decreases to 56%, and that's absolutely amazing not to mention our lateral G's go up let's do that as you can see those still aren't very impressive stats but they are what they are and oh totally forgot to look 1250 yeah that was 2500 sorry about that Alright, well that was actually pretty successful. After upgrading our weight, our wheels, and plenty of our handling, we dropped our time down from 2 minutes 5.7 to 2 minutes 3 flat. Now we're 5 seconds away from the EVO and we knocked 2.7 seconds off our time. We also raised ourselves to an E rank as you saw. Obviously, we're still quite a bit off. Luckily we still have $12,699 to play with. So now, obviously, we need more power. That's been seen, and we really do need tires. But what I think we're gonna do, instead of upgrading our current motor, I think we're just gonna go for a straight up engine swap. Now we can spend $6,800 on these three, which are uh, the Mark II's engine, which is you know more powerful and lighter, but for that much power, it's definitely not worth it, especially since you can get uh, the GTI VR6 here, and then, <laughs> 4 liter turbo from the Volkswagen Beetle, which is actually even better than that. But we can get a massive power upgrade for just a few hundred more from the Golf R, 267 horsepower. And we'd be increasing our weight, not by much, by 26 pounds it looks like. We'd still be uh, uh, keeping a pretty good weight distribution. It'll be a little bit worse for the front, but it'll be a 2 liter displacement. I think it's definitely the way to go, it's turboed. It's going to be nice. We probably won't have to increase power all that much, and we'll still be within the, our range. So let's go ahead and get that. Very expensive, but it's better in the long run. That all drops us down to about 5,300, and we still need some important aspects, such as tires. 
And I'm still debating if I want to go with a better compound or if I just want to go wider because, yeah, it's going to be tough. Plus, you know, we've got this new motor and we've got a lot more power. We're, we might need brakes. <laughs> we might need uh, their transmission and clutch. I think we should just start from the bottom and see what we can do because, you know, we've only got 5,300 to play with. Let's just go with a street tire compound. It won't help out immensely, but it'll definitely be something. Make it a little bit easier to handle all that power. So let's go with that straight out of the gate. Hmm. Now I think before making it wider, we should definitely add some brakes. It might be a really good idea. Oh, actually, no, that would put us over the limit. Right now we have 3,299 left to spend. That's $1 more than we should. I think then we should definitely go with our drivetrain, reduce some shift time, and make it a little bit easier. Now it's just deciding. We can afford a sp sport transmission, we can afford the race clutch though, or should we go cheaper on both? Hmm. If we go cheaper on both, we can get 1,400 there, 1,400 there. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll get a sport clutch and a street transmission. Decrease our shift time on both. And that's 2,800, so. All right, so here we are with our $28,500 Mark I Golf GTI. Don't forget, GTI. Let's compare it, shall we? Let's just pick another car at random, just so we can look at these side by side. Ah, oh, not perfectly side by side, but oh well. So here we are. Obviously, in terms of rank, we're higher. We're up 30 ranks on that Evo, so we should have the advantage now, according to Forza. 305 horsepower to our 267. 314 pound-feet of torque to 254. But the most important number right now is weight. Almost 3,400 there. 1955. Under 2,000. We're still under a ton, even with all this power. 57% distribution better than the Evos and our displacement is the same we both have turbos unfortunately we're only front-wheel drive there is an all-wheel drive conversion we couldn't afford it though and yeah obviously this isn't how I build my perfect golf GTI if I had all the money in the world I'd be you know building it with bigger wheels and lowering it even further and getting all the trinkets you can but we're on a tight budget here so we're gonna make it work with what we've got and see if we beat that Evo Alright guys, we're back at the track in Mazda Speedway Laguna Seca. 
and we absolutely demolished that Evo. The final time was 1 minute 53.1 seconds, which is 4.9 seconds faster than the Evo's hot lap, and we cost $500 less. So if you guys want to be Evo fast, but not for Evo money, this is your way to do it. <laughs> we probably could have spent less money to be faster with how much we demolished it, but here we are. Now here we are. Let me show you the wheel spin madness. And by the time you're in like third or fourth gear, it's usually only the driver, I mean uh, the passenger side that has the wheel spin. It's kind of insane, honestly, but yeah, here we go. I'll try engage the clutch, that would help. Now here we are in fourth gear. Now just take a look at this. Flora completely in fourth gear. Unimaginable wheel spin in fourth gear. Now uh, at this point what I would normally do is tune this thing and then try to make it even faster than the Evo for one last ditch effort. But since we absolutely demolished it, and since we don't have any optional tuning setups except for uh, tire pressure, I really don't think it'll make that big of a difference. But uh, one thing I definitely want your guys' feedback on is the way I displayed this episode. So as you saw, every race done, all of them, were shown to you with, uh, with uh, replay cameras. Do you, did you enjoy that? Do you think that looks cooler than showing me driving a uh, third-person view like this? Uh, do you think this is cooler or do you think it's better to watch the replay camera? Obviously watching it this way shows you the lap time in the corner specifically and you can see exactly how fast I'm going when I'm shifting, etc. So it might be more engaging this way. I thought the replay camera was a better idea just because it looked more entertaining. But that's just my opinion. Obviously you guys are the ones watching it. I definitely want to know what your opinion on this matter is. So definitely go down in the comment section and let me know. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this style of episode. I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. And uh, who knows, I might be able to be even more stricter with the rules later, come up with a new type of setup, obviously different cars. But if you guys have any car that you want to see me build a car faster than, <laughs> for a limited amount of money, let me know and I'll see what I can do. You know, I'm not saying I'll take every request at this point, but definitely let me know and we'll see. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for the next one. Stay tuned for my next walkthrough. And stay tuned for Bosnian Cheese and I working on our first cooperative walkthrough on this channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.